probably looks fine. Um, so yeah, each week we play in the teaching ladder is an exciting week where it means uh, we're available. Uh, yeah, uh, means we're both available to play this weekend, and we try to uh, talk about the game after it is. We do the post game analysis after the game concludes. And we use this as a mechanism to help us further un understanding of the game. And if we get stumped, then we take the game Shogi Sunday um, at Shogi Harbor's channel and ask uh, if they could give practical advice. Let's see. I had some fun remarks before this. Uh, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Whatever. I'm not sure if there's a standard keyboard shortcut for it, but I've got a script that enlarges my button to make it super easy for me to just push the, the greet button on my overlay. Um, so this is an interesting shape already. They haven't twice pushed the rook pawn, but they've split their rook from their bishop. Hmm. I have so many thoughts. Um. Hmm. Now this pawn out here could be vulnerable. So... Trying to decide, do I play third foul or fourth foul rook here? Um, I'm not sure where this silver is going. I'm not sure that I have to decide between third or fourth file just yet, given this interesting move order. Um, it might behoove me to pick fourth file and try to open the diagonal immediately. Try something super aggressive here. Um... But no, the moving the rook to the third file it seems like a more stable shape here. Uh, because if they end up putting some piece on this file here, to uh, it becomes a target. So they're going to keep this file empty. And since they're keeping the file empty here, it means they're going to have pieces clumped up toward the center instead. So, my very, very superficial read about this is that uh, my rook is most likely to find activity on this third file. Um, so there are many other positions where I just play the rook to defend this point in the center and then more gradually try to work my way forward. Here I'm feeling more aggressive, so... I'm not sure. If any of what I said makes sense here. Right, so this is the downside of playing the rook here. Um, so I can't quite get my desired shape here. Um, yeah, I'm going to prevent their rook from moving. So I've kind of forced them to push this by bringing my rook all the way over here. 
I might end up moving the rook over once again. That might be a loss of a tempo. And my thought is that if the silver tries to hit the bishop's head, I can use my silver to defend this. Okay. Um... Not really sure what we're doing this game. Oh, this is trying to stop... Well, my bishop's not going there anyway. Let's get my king out of here before I mess this up somehow. Right, so... If the rook moves, uh, potentially this is open. So they still haven't attacked uh, my position at the head of my bishop. Um, I'm hesitant to move the silver until I know too much about what they're doing. Hmm. Do I Anaguma or not? In general, I don't enjoy playing it. Um, here, I'm not sure if it's better or worse than other strategies. Since they've pushed a lot of pawns. That should give me time to complete building it. I'm too curious. Let's do it. Let's find out if I build this, are they going to attack me? <laughs> they prepared a nice black tea just for this occasion, so we can't let that go to waste. So we solidify our castle and wait for them to come attack us. Um, <laughs> all right, we're also going to have to defend the head of the bishop at some point as it becomes vulnerable here. So yeah, this could be a protected uh, fight. We've given them a lot of options, and so it's up to them to come up with a good strategy. <laughs> Pardon me. Yeah. Sometimes if there's not a ton of people playing on the teaching ladder, uh, we can get interesting pairings. Like, okay, well, okay, so if this knight somehow were... Uh, yeah, so these pairings are such that um, sometimes people joke, oh, I'm going to destroy you, or something like that, that... The, there's a large rating gap between the player ratings. And this one isn't quite so large. Um, but 
yeah, sometimes we get very strong players at the top end. Or we get a bunch of competitive middle players and then like a couple newbies at the very bottom. But sometimes that happens too. So, um, I didn't make any jokes about me destroying anyone this uh, match. But later on I will have a match with a six Don. So, that'll be exciting. Uh, we'll give it our best. But yeah, for sure there's going to be a lot of details for us to read that game. So, this bishop's a target. Um, yeah, they want to aim at this point while they still can. So I want one, two, and to hit this bishop right here. And that's my plan. I, I do want to activate my bishop and activate my rook, but this is proving a bit challenging, given that my opponent from the outset did everything they could to deactivate my pieces. I did give a little consideration to opening this diagonal, but was very easily spooked out of doing so. Maybe I should not have been so scared about it. I don't know. Another idea that came to mind is pushing this pawn to chase this bishop. Um, This is... So currently they have a twin gold castle, and then they have a silver out here and a silver out here. Usually the silvers come up the board a little bit more, because they're more effective. Uh, golds are better defensive pieces, silvers are better offensive pieces, uh, despite whatever Joseki might show you. So... Oh. There might be a cheapo here, too, if I oppose the rooks, trade a pawn, get the bishop out here, sack the bishop, and take the rook. That's in the cards here. Um, so I could push the pawn first, even. The pawn takes rook over. Oh, then they push the pawn again, and I lose a piece. That could sting a lot. Yeah, let's not do it that way, then. Um... <clears throat> This bishop has a lot of influence. Hmm. So if I bring the rook over, they're going to do something defensive. They're going to block this line at some point, and that would mean make my rook moving over look pretty dumb. Uh, yeah, I think this is a sensible spot to put the silver... Uh, because it's difficult for them to hold both of these pawns here. They can't put a piece here to defend both pawns, and the bishop's also exposed. So silver, uh, moving to 4-5 as a triple fork. And I don't really see what they do about this triple fork idea. Or 6-5, rather, because I'm playing Gota. Oh, I'm sorry. They could actually defend the bishop's head quite easily, couldn't they? Um, hmm. That makes things quite a bit more awkward for me. Yeah, I should have seen that. Oh, joy. So, after I play my move, I see this... Uh, counter defending this point. And it's not so easy for me to do anything here. I mean, I could push a pawn of some sort to somehow attack. I just... Their attack does come quite quickly, and mine... 
I'm not seeing in great detail here. If I had a pawn in hand, I could threaten more violent stuff, but I don't. I could try to push on the edge to get a pawn in hand. Yeah. That might be the way to go here. But it seems like they're playing well. So, only now I'm having flashbacks about this concept they call Subway Rook. And yeah, it's quite the flashback. So, um, I might be in a universe of danger here. I might have to dig myself out of this. Won't that be fun? So the problem I had with bringing the rook over is that once they block this line, there's no cheapo to get me out of this pin. So it's just difficult for a person playing Anaguma Castle to build an attack in the first place. But once you get an attack going, then things become easier. Yep, there's... There's the subway rook, right on time. Um, if I bring the rook over, they bring this down. If I exchange, they could bring the rook into the corner to avoid my cheapo. Hmm. So. How do I attack here? I push the pawn, they take, lance takes, lance takes, their lance could promote. I push this. I am threatening to get this knight. But then they can threaten my bishop directly. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see any obvious weakness that my rook can aim at. That's a bit troubling. But yeah, pawn takes, lance takes, lance takes, bishop takes. If they bring the rook over, I could sack the bishop for the knight. And then could I place the sacked knight somewhere super effective, maybe? I'm not sure. Hmm. Oh, also, if they stick the rook in the corner, then I should just open the diagonal and make use of my pieces again. <clears throat> hmm. I mean, yeah, their attack's terrifying, but I have something of a defense, so... Um, yeah, let's, let's just solidify my castle. Understand their bishop's not hitting this point. And see what they do. This is like a tug-of-war game where I'm letting go of the rope. Just asking, could you please attack me? And... I'm sure they will oblige. And I'm not it's gonna hurt a lot when I um get hit. Oh. 
They block their bishop. All right. That reduces some of the chaos here. Um, I didn't think this would actually occur here. Because there's a lot going on in this position. Blocking the bishop has a, some downside as well. Uh, it does force my silver to retreat. Or forces me to do something here. Yeah, no, that's a good exploit of me loosening this point, isn't it? Hmm. So it's a bit difficult for my bishop to become active in this position now. On the other hand, their bishop is not going to like take my lance in the corner or stuff like this. So there's uh, my position. The way I would attack changes, I guess. I don't know whether to try to pawn exchange on the center file. I mean, it feels like I needed a pawn in hand earlier. This is a really easy way for me to get a pawn in hand now. And then if I had that, I could push this pawn and then drop another one to collect the knight. And then all our piece, uh, a lot of peace exchanges happen very quickly while this king is still here. So it seems like exchanging pawns is probably a sensible thing for me to do. Um, but I might want to uh, preface that by like moving this lance away so that, or maybe my bishop's going to dive back here if attacked, but the bishop can't come back out this way very easily just yet. I don't know. I'm sorry, if I push this pawn, then my bishop can dive back here and back and hit the knight and the rook this way. Yeah, so this is fine. Um, granted, there could become another Vanguard pawn on 5-5 very quickly, and, you know, bringing the bishop out in front of my pawns might not do anything useful here. <laughs> Yeah, getting a pawn in hand will help me force more exchanges to happen. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm trying to decide between pushing this edge pawn or pushing the center pawn. Long term, having the center pawn here is going to be a huge asset. Um, Yeah, what a tricky position.
So I'm trying to figure out where, which pawn am I going to push, and where, therefore, does my rook belong. I think my rook's in the correct place already. Oh, okay, there's an answer that binds together everything here. Um, yeah, there's this cheeky thing. Do I bring it back one or back two? I think back one. I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah, so this cheeky answer exploits the way they've bundled their pieces. So this pawn blocks the bishop. Since the bishop is blocked, um, there's no way to stop my rook from advancing here. There's no counterplay against this. Also welcome. Um... But yes, it looks like I push this pawn, and we exchange this pawn, and I get the pawn back in hand and drop it on the knight's head. Um, and anything tricky they try to do, I could counter here. Like if they push the center pawn, I just do pawn takes. If they like try to bring the knight out, it's not going to be so easy for them. Yes, yeah, so they're having to tuck the bishop back to try to deal with my rook. Which is kind of weird. I guess it's the only defensive try there. Maybe I underestimated it. Yeah, this gets complicated. I'm trying to decide whether to exchange, or what to exchange, rather. Okay, this vanguard pawn is too much. I have to remove it. So this is most unusual that um, here I've created a hole some distance from my castle. Usually I would prefer to keep this pawn on the board to deal with longer term endgame stuff. But uh, here I think I have to start attacking before something bad happens. So yeah, I'm incurring this uh, hole in my position that I don't see them immediately exploiting. Long term, it's a hole. Long term, it's a problem that I have no way to fix. But I have to incur this in order to be able to make some sort of forward progress without sacrificing my edge here. Alternatively, I could have pushed this pawn and tried to sacrifice the lance for a pawn and try to collect this knight. And I don't think that works. So I think I have to do this. Yeah, it's such a weird position because usually I think by now they would have attacked something. They're lining up an extremely strong attack and just waiting for the right moment to launch it. 
so it's a bit concerning. Um, also note that if I have the chance to bring my silver up onto 5-6 here, the silver has no path backward, so I should not bring it up this far, unless I want to sacrifice it. Okay, that's a bit crazy. That, that's way more aggressive than I expected them to play here. Um, because now I get the Vanguard Pawn in 5-5. Five five. And they are left without a Pawn in hand. So they're Sanjiyo. banking everything on this attack that they had other opportunities to start. But now is when they choose to start the attack. Yonjubyo. Didn't expect that. Maybe it makes sense. I don't know. Either way, we're going to chase this bishop here. And we no longer have deficit of a pawn. Like, um, we no longer have the situation without a pawn in hand. I think at this point forward, we're always going to have something in hand. Or be able to get something into the hand to initiate exchanges. Um, so they are probably just going to push this and yes I'm scared uh, but what can I do oh okay that's pretty bold um I mean, if that's playable, I'm in trouble, I guess. Seems playable. Huh. I have no idea what to do. I need to activate my rook. I've activated my other pieces, so let's get the rook active now. I'm not sure if this rook being blocked by the bishop is a huge problem. Earlier I s didn't think it was. But the more I look at this, uh, the less optimistic I am. There is a good chance at some point I might drop a pawn on 9-7 just so I can sack my bishop to get it out of the way. Um, unless I could somehow get the rook out and hitting the king immediately. Which may be possible. Go. Yep, so that's an attack, all right. Um, I'm not an expert in this system, so I don't know how to meet that. Um... I think I have to do silver takes, and then they push the pawn, and then I run, and then they push it again, and I have no idea what's going on. We're gonna try this. I'm maybe in a lot of trouble.
But yeah, if I just let them take my lance, I die. So we're not going to just let them take our lance. I still wonder about this pawn drop. So if I run, they push again, I take... They have three pieces lined up to recapture. Well, they have four attacking the square. I don't have four defending it. So I can't hold it forever. Um... All right, I'm too curious. I have no idea what I'm doing. But as long as we keep exchanging one piece for one piece, maybe it'll be okay. I don't know. Obviously their attack is far faster here. It's just a question of, is it strong enough? Yeah, that's what I would play. Um... I planned lance takes here. Yeah, I think this is the only way I can defend. I have to keep this knight in reserve back here because the knight can't be attacked. This sacrifice is super common. But I don't know that that being common means it's always strong. So we're going to take this horse. Now, I was saying I'm threatening to sack my bishop out here. That was a threat. That doesn't mean I have to do it. So if they've run out of attacking forces, or if there's some way I can sensibly defend this or run out of it, then I might not need to sack the bishop here. I should have stopped and thought, but I'm just kind of emotionally overwhelmed at this point. Um, because, yeah, there's no way I can stop this attack on the edge of the board other than the sack. All right. Interesting. So this is the other thing I was just thinking about, is move the gold over and just start running. Oh, I can't Nifu, damn it. Nifu's the most natural reaction there ever. 
We're gonna defend this. Yeah, if I had taken this lance, I think I actually get made it. I'm not sure. But the spooky thing is, like, they're threatening to drop another pawn here. And after this drop, like, it's super hard for me to resist the attack. So if I'd just taken this lance, I'm probably in trouble after they take here and drop more stuff. Um, so I was thinking of taking this lance because my bishop's not doing anything else at the moment. I don't need to take it yet, though. Oh, they're threatening a lot of fun stuff here. Yeah, of course I have to take it. Duh. This is the only thing I can do to save my king. Yeah. Counting is hard. Counting is super hard. So. Yeah. When they have like a, a dragon, like one square in front of my king, and I have a rook and a bishop here, and nothing defending my king, then that's bad. So we have to do this. Somehow I've already got the other bishop in my hand. I forget when that happened, but I'm grateful I've got it at this point. Um... So if I try to defend this, they'll trade, I take back. I have enough to defend it with, don't I? That's so weird. Yeah, so... <clears throat> somehow... There's got to be some devastating punch that crushes my position and I'm just missing it. Yeah, pawn drop allows my knight to move and then I get a counter punch here. So I'm not understanding something here. So I move the knight. I guess they just... No, if they drop another thing to attack, that could be interesting, but I'm threatening the rook. <sighs> my rook defends my castle, which normally is not possible. Yeah, we're going to get the knight out of here, and then I think I'm going to take this pawn threatening to take the knight uh, because a knight could be another useful defensive but also an offensive piece like I want to place knights to attack their king oh wait a second I see how this position resolves <laughs> oh dear oh me oh my all right my king actually escapes. Like, 
That's not supposed to happen. Um. Yeah, they have to play this forward. Um. Oh, I can attack it again. It's moved forward. It's a target. Okay. So since that's a vital piece of this attack, I can continue harassing it. Even if it dooms this knight here, that's okay. Uh, I would have preferred to put it back here to defend the king, but this is adequate. I need to, like, stop this attack on the edge as fast as I can. So either the rook uh, moves over to the side here, which slows the attack, or it runs back and then I can drop something more in its face, which is not going to happen. Uh, very likely they're going to pursue this knight, so I can pursue this knight. Oh, but also I could promote this knight here. Silver takes, bishop drop hitting this. Or, no. Tactics don't quite work out for me to win the silver. Ha. Yeah, I thought this might be what they do. Uh, the problem is, this pawn is blocked by the silver. Um, so, this costs them a move. They've had to block their own pawn to get this attack to move forward. Now, if I take this, that speeds them up by a move. If I just ignore it, if I just take this other piece, you know... It's fine. My king is running. That's how this attack is going to end. My king is going to run out of it. Um, but that might not be necessary if I checkmate them first. Sanjubyo. Yeah. I this is a weird game. But I think we finally got it under control. Famous last words, eh? Okay. Um. And if I had some checkmate here, that would simplify things. Sanjubio. Yeah, I don't know. My king starts running. Oh dear. Incidentally, making room for another lance in the corner. Hmm. But yeah, this. I think they've won the edge. Uh, but somehow through tactics, I've. Uh, I still dominate. Unfortunately, a bishop's not the right piece for me to check them here, so I just need to come up with something else. <laughs> 
but an early escape of the king is worth eight moves, they say. So, we have to try... Yeah, I was more a fan of them taking a pawn than taking this gold. I know the gold looks nice, but this further reinforces my defense. So now I have two pieces protecting the square. They have two attacking it. So they can't just push now. They have to like add another piece to reinforce an attack here. Uh, or I guess if they were to sack a piece there, that would like... Yeah, it, that would strengthen their attack on the square, but they'd have to sacrifice a piece to do it. Meanwhile, now I'm starting to look at this combination of pieces, and can I drop them around the king and checkmate it? I'm not seeing a mate yet. Okay, yeah. They pursue my king as they should. Um... Tricky stuff, mate. Well, on some previous Shogi Sunday, I was told if I play Cowardly Moves, I get banned from the harbor. So we're not playing Cowardly Moves. Uh, when I'm playing, might be suicidal, but that's different than Cowardly in this instance anyway. Um... Alright, we'll see if this works or not. Sanju Sanju I don't know if that gets me mated. Well, 
like we are playing on a razor's edge here but i'm not retreating any of my pieces it would have been so easy for me to just block this bishop in a simple way and just say no nope, no checkmate for you but that's no fun for anyone so instead we get these wild positions where i was considering this bishop sack in the corner then i could do knight takes and they could take my rook and maybe i have a mate here somewhere but i don't see it yeah so they take this i've trapped my rook um uh the rook retreats it's not going anywhere i like the knight attacking the head of the castle but it might be more effective close range i don't know oh, what am i going to do with the bishop i don't know but I've got three pieces now attacking this lance. I keep trying to find some way that I'm going to keep the silver in hand as long as I can, because a silver or a gold is excellent for checkmate or for deflecting the king in a vital moment. Um, so that said, like I've trapped my rook. Like gold drops surrounds it, but takes, 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 takes. I mean, basically committing to sacking the rook or sacking something on the other side and letting the king out. And I don't want to let the king out, so there's a good chance I might be sacrificing my rook, which might get me mated. Yeah, I thought that might happen. My knight on this edge is not doing anything other than attacking the slants, so that's where we start, is by this exchange. Um, I just don't know what goes on next. The king is defending this gold. I could deflect the king. No, my drag, my rook can't take this because it's not a dragon. Uh, yeah, my knights are not effective. We're going to start with that one after all. Even though it's attacking the head, this knight is actually useful even though they're both attacking the same point. I don't see any point in continuing to attack this here. Um... So I'm giving them knights. I'm trying to find some way to make this attack work that doesn't allow their king to escape. Oh, there, I see my cowardly escape now. Jeez. Well, he 
yeah, I, I don't see better. So if I sack on this side, the king goes into the corner, and I don't have the correct piece to checkmate the king in the corner. Um, if I push down one... How does he defend? He places a knight, and that traps the rook again. I somehow this feels like the right thing to do. It doesn't checkmate, not directly. Um, so, yeah, this is risky. Uh, well, yeah, actually letting the rook go for two golds and having this other gold in a not good location is a good exchange. Oh, welcome. Yeah, uh, okay, so they take my silver to my surprise, but they take it. We're just playing our teaching ladder game. And try not to play some embarrassing retreating move here. So yeah, welcome everyone. Uh, this game I played on Aguma Castle, although it might not be obvious because my king has escaped the corner. And they played Subway Rook, and here we are. In the whole game I've been threatening, you know, I'll just take your pawn and I'll take your knight. And then this suddenly sped up a lot. So... I've tried to throw everything at their king to checkmate it, and they just aren't taking my dragon, they aren't taking my rook. I don't know. Like, what do you do? On the other hand, I can't find a way to, like, force them to take the dragon which will result in a guaranteed checkmate for me. So I'm a bit hesitant about just throwing the dragon for nothing here. Because <laughs> that's going to devastate me in my back rank. Uh, I don't see a way to continue checking them. My attack is too slow. <laughs> So, um, I think this might be the right way to go about it. So next I could drop something on the gold's head, and if the gold moves forward, bad stuff happens to them. Uh, so... Yeah, let's see, I would drop either a lance here or a bishop here or something. And if they take it, then... Oh, the gold still defends directly backward, because that's how golds defend. Okay. Goodness. I promise I'm not playing with my food here. I've been advised to not play retreating moves when I'm attacking, so we're seeing if I can 
make an attack and never retreat. For me, that's a difficult thing. But maybe I can do it. All right, so I'm trying to pile up as many pieces as I, as I can next to their king, and they just keep exchanging things in a way that I keep gaining material. So... Let's see. I mean, I guess that means they're playing good defense. So I'm not going to try to force this to move away. Wait, they could, like, defend with a bishop drop, couldn't they? Somewhere. Am I going to just have to take this pawn and take the knight and just force my way through the the way that I'd originally planned. Seems like such a slow attack. Just, like, I could put a lance here and try to attack down the center. A lance down the center might be effective, especially after this. Or maybe I push the pawn. Then this becomes active. Um... So, rook takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, gold takes. I can't outnumber them. They always have just enough pieces defending. Um, yeah, pushing the pawn gives me a free attacker. I should do that. Yeah, because a pawn is just as much of an attacker as anything else in shogi. In chess, you're not so likely to checkmate with the pawn. In shogi, a pawn could be a useful attacking force. I'm just trying to deflect everything from the defense of this silver here so I can bring enough pieces to checkmate the king. But yeah, I think my next move is actually pawn takes pawn. Just trying to get the rook in. Uh, damn it. This forces me to make a decision over whether to play another cowardly move or not. Uh, cowardly thing is just take this. So, um, I play this cowardly move. Oh, man. I feel bad about it. But, um, I'll cry with my material. Plus, it's very good to see Shaiman around again. Uh, welcome. Sanjubyo.
40秒30秒 So at some point I've got to find a checkmate. 40秒 I really do. I also have to be careful which pieces, which squares around the king I sacrifice at because they have four generals defending their king right now. Thanks for the game. Oh, that was intense. Was that intense or what? Uh, let's see what they say. Uh, let's see. It's fine. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like the game might continue here. Yeah. So even though technically the interface decides a win by timeout, I can still continue play. Um, let's see. Oh, let's see. We got some comments already here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of good moves here. Um, huh. So I take gold takes. Wait, if I take this, I don't know. I do bishop takes, bishop takes, gold takes if I take here. Yeah, that's the way forward. Yeah, so I guess we'll get to comments in a bit, sorry. We're going to uh, allow some more moves to happen, even though it was, uh, oh, okay. So they are taking a small BRB, okay. <laughs> yeah, they prepared a nice large uh, tea in advance of this massive fight here. Uh, so, yeah, I think here I've got lots of threats. So I'm piling this. Oops. Yeah, I've got a threat here. I've got a threat there. I've got a threat here. So it's it's a bit much. So on 90, when I played the bishop 9-7 drop, I was looking at bishop 8-8 to interpose, but didn't find a follow-up. Oh, in that case, I could drop the lance on 7-7? Seven, seven? Um, interesting. Wow. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, uh, well, I guess I'm remarking more about my own king's shape, where I say I'm not super familiar with the Anaguma strategy. Uh, but, yeah. I guess, in general, I have a lot to learn about. Uh, Suma stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Yes, cool. Nice. So, yeah, here I'm taking this now. And here I think I take the silver. Unless somehow I checkmate them first. No, we take this. And yeah, I have a super strong attack. So. Yeah, this is painful for them, unfortunately. Uh, so I know they technically, again, there was a time up in the middle of this, but we'll allow them to play it forward a few bit, a uh, few moves. And then we'll go back to the beginning and do post-game analysis on it. Um, because this is a teaching ladder game. So the idea is that uh, we're supposed to learn from uh, each other's perspectives and each other's mistakes um, instead of just playing the game. Uh, hopefully we also learn from it too. Yeah, uh, I don't disagree. It still couldn't hurt for me to practice here somehow. Yeah, so there's a lot of ideas, I guess. Um, I mean, technically they could do some bishop drop check fork stuff too. Um, but yeah, if somehow I like forget about the location of my rook or the location of this rook or the location of my king, there might be some tactic somewhere at some point. But uh, yeah, I overpower them quite handily here. Um, yeah, cheapo with knight 7-4. Yeah, that could happen. So there's stuff in this position, that's for sure. Uh, let's see. What were earlier comments in this game? Uh, is there a keyboard shortcut to greet? Um, oh, he's asking if he should watch the stream or not. It's entirely his call. I don't care one way or the other. Um, yeah. Anyone's welcome. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, here it, it's super rough. Yeah. 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 Um. Uh, we could, uh, 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 so let's see. So, I don't know about a keyboard shortcut for greet. Uh, yeah. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So, we'll get through um, starting the game analysis from the beginning. I'm already wondering if I could have played this differently. Because, like, it seems maybe I have more options. There's some fly landed. There we go. I can see again. 
Um, uh, so Bishop blocks my rook, so yeah. I'm not totally sure how to resolve this in the best way. If I heavily studied opening Joseki, I would know more about what specifically to do here. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, perhaps this particular pawn push didn't quite have to happen just yet. Uh, <laughs> and then if no, then you push the pawn. I suppose. Yeah. So, yeah, I commit to Anaguma, even though this is, like, other than them giving me this one pawn move on the edge, um, they've got a lot of time to attack me. So, it's just a question of, and then I give them this pawn on the edge, that move. So, like, it's a question of, can they attack me effectively? Um... Yeah. Uh. Um, so... the one hand I don't really want to trade uh, five, five three pawn uh, this guy here um oh they don't know if they should have done this on the other hand uh, I need a pawn uh, uh, without a pawn I can't really attack your knight. Uh, that's this guy here. <laughs> so, yeah, at this point, um, I definitely needed the pawn to attack. Let's see. Um. <laughs> have one more thing for your other hand. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that... That shot I had up here was interesting. Um... Uh, you're thinking opening this diagonal could be good against the subway. Yeah, I think you're right. So, yeah, this, this line here... Uh, Hmm. Yeah. Well, hang on. Not totally sure about the bishop exchange being possible, but... Um... 
Yeah, this is challenging stuff for sure. Um. Oh, this forces my rook over. Yeah, let me look at this. So. Yeah. Um. So I guess where this significantly differs from the game is that the rook is on a different file where it's blocked by a pawn. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I am s there's a lot to consider. But yeah, it seems like this exchange of pawns on that file doesn't significantly change much. So, yep, they launch a good attack. Um, I launch my counterattack. They sacrifice. And they take again, because that looks required, I guess? Yeah. Right, so they'd intended this. I had difficulty reading this out during the game. Um, yeah, that looks like how that might have gone. And uh, maybe this here? I'm not sure. Hmm. So, is this better for me? Uh... So, yeah, my king is extremely exposed. Um, yeah. Maybe this would have been a more practical try for me. I don't know. Um... So, after I do this pawn drop, what might have transpired? I mean, the slants might rejoin the attack. Uh, how do I even attempt to block this? Yeah, you could attempt to block the lance, and then we take... And then we do this again. All right, so now we have a knight and a knight. Oh, yeah, this thing. This original idea. Um, hmm. So... This is tricky. Um... Oh, yeah, that's cool, too. Actually, yeah, why not this? That looks powerful. Uh, so, huh. Hmm. So maybe we both had this enormous oversight. Wow. Is it really so simple? Sure seems that way. Yeah, so... The more pieces there are around my king, the more danger my king is in. Uh... yeah? Oh, hang on. Spectators find all the good moves, you know, so... Um, yeah. 
This is interesting. So it sure seems like I'm extremely dead here. How did we get here? That's interesting. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess this is part of what makes this so fascinating, is that this pawn and bishop are still in place. Um, yeah, so... Hmm. I'm not sold on this particular knight drop, but I think in general I'm dead here. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's not a whole lot I can do. This line is going to open up instantaneously and I will die. And that's how this will go. If I drop the knight... Yeah, that's what I was... Uh, I was prepared to point out the sack, but... Um, this attack just seems compelling. So, so I have to back up and figure out, oh, <laughs> let's see, uh, uh, chess, there's a saying, mate ends the game, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is fantastic. So how how is this possible from where we were in the game? Uh so I pointed out this. Oh, I see. So I can't block this on here. Uh, well, uh, uh, it seems like mate. I'm not sure. But yeah. This sack on 9-3 seems awesome. <laughs> uh, engines would know better, but yeah, it looks... Uh, so, let's see. So in turn, that means my pawn drop here doesn't really matter. What else doesn't matter? Um, so yeah, I guess something like this right away. Um, oh, but here, here pawn drop might be possible. Um... Uh, so, yeah, I think this is necessary, this insertion is appropriate, uh, oh, okay, the center, yeah, moving the golds up, yeah. I should keep a note of that. Because the gold is the foundation of a castle. Uh, yeah, given the really fun shape of that castle, I just assumed he was confused. But no, clearly not. I wonder how much uh, before this I'm still in danger. So, like, 
Yeah, that bishop sack seems destructive. Um... I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe this thing. This, their attack is powerful. Um... They could somehow work one more attacker into the mix. Uh, if somehow this guy could make it up here, uh, then that would be amazing. But but it looks like I'm in trouble. Uh, what about nine four pawn to defend here? Um, I'm missing something, some context, unfortunately. But, let's see, yeah. Yeah, they're absolutely right. They can't just like willy-nilly work their that silver up the board. Um, so, and the variation after trading a bunch of stuff on the edge. Uh, yeah. So instead of dropping the pawn on 9-7, uh, defending with a pawn on 9-4, that might work. Um, trying to think, because then that brings some of their attackers closer and into range where I could start collecting them. So potentially there's some way that could work there. Um, I'm still concerned because I've blocked my rook from the side. This was super risky. Um, ah. Yeah. Uh. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Not sure that subway work is appropriate for every game. But it is appropriate in games where I'm not attacking. 9-8 uh, uh, pawn, 9-2 token, king takes, 9-8 rook, yeah. Uh. <laughs> so, let's see. Yeah. So, yeah, let's see, you're thinking 9-8 pawn was the variation, and on that, 9-2, token takes, king takes, and then rook here, you're really suggesting this pawn drop. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um... Yeah, I don't know that the sacrifice works quite so well here. Um, so, I mean, it's just an idea, sure. But yeah, when I start playing responses like this, uh, I mean, I don't even need to respond so dramatically here, do I? Uh, but if I can get away with something like this and be okay, then maybe the attack hasn't quite worked out. Uh, depends on your definition of okay. Like, I didn't have to bring the king up, but, uh, yeah. Maybe I am mated here. Wouldn't that be funny? I don't know.
Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, probably I should just uh, do something sane instead of this. Uh... Um, so I can still run away. Or I could just take the silver with the bishop. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm glad Louis joined us in this room because, like, we're looking at some interesting stuff. I'm not so sure if this. Sack is so necessary there. Um, well, first of all, we started with a lance drop instead of a pawn drop. But um, even if we'd started with some other move. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, so maybe this one. Okay, so... Oh, is my king escape here? Is that the point? So I should have seen that. Wait. Wow. Uh... Okay. Yeah, so not sure if we're looking at rook takes immediately. Yeah, or I this the silver drop looks interesting and then rook takes. Yeah. So this might yeah. So it looks like I made it. <laughs> Right. So Yeah, we need to run the king as fast as we can. Um Oh, thankfully they don't have another silver. If they had one more silver, we'd be uh, instantly mated. Um, I guess that's the problem with sacking the silver. Hmm. S hmm. Yeah, I guess maybe you're right about uh, sacking the lance here. I missed this idea. Um, so this here instead. Yes. Uh, so I have to take this, and then we have two pieces attacking this knight. Oh, but then the gold just moves up to defend it. You're right. What the heck? Where's the checkmate? Because it seems like these golds can always move. Like, there's always something here. So, if I can always, yeah, take it the rook first, then drop the silver. Yeah. So that's just simply mate here. Yeah, there's no resistance at this point. Um. Well... I'm confused. Oh yeah, the king shouldn't stay on the edge. So earlier we had looked at that uh, with that king retreating this way, like Lily points out. Uh, if the king is staying on the edge, like 
Uh, that was what we looked at last time, and uh, it might make a difference. And that if the king stays on the edge, it's instantly checkmate. The king goes up. That's just dumb, but I thought it was funny, but not really. But yeah, up is probably fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I could take that instead of being obstinate. Um, yeah. Yeah, Lily's right. So, yeah, my bishop at present is doing nothing. Aside from protecting the 9-7 square, which it doesn't need to protect, so... Yeah. Well... Anyway, um... I'm not even sure about that in the actual game line. Oh, wait. I'm not sure that it should have worked out the way it did. Um, so, let's see. Oh, sorry, I need to follow the host position. Yeah. Yeah, material's just material. It's not chess where you lose a knight and then you fret for most of the game because you're down a knight. Um, but, yeah, this... Somehow... Stuff didn't quite work out as it should have. Um, so... Yeah, this attack against the king is super strong. Uh, man, this is such a confusing game. Because, like, my defense should not have worked here. If somehow, like, how could I have possibly gained enough time or material or something for this to actually have come together? And I, I don't understand. I've walled in, I did the best I could to protect my king. Um, yeah, and somehow, I don't know. I guess the thing that was different here than many Anaguma games with, like, Tomahawk is that with Tomahawk, like, the silver, I think, is supposed to participate in the attack. So instead, we're playing, he's playing down an attacker, and somehow that, I also got in this gold as a defender, which is just weird. Uh, isn't 65, uh, silver 9-3, oh yeah, well, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, silver drop at 9-3, uh, either is a blunder or Senta is somehow already lost. Yeah, so either... At this point, it's that's. It looks like a blunder. The only reason it would not be a blunder is if Senta has already lost for every other reason, which seems surprising, and I don't believe it. But yeah. So during the game, yeah, when I saw this, 
I was able to finally relax a bit and take the rook and survive. Um, yeah. Silver drop is in your own way, sort of. Yeah. Yeah, the so they're playing down an attacker, and the silver drop slows down their attack and drops the rook at the same time. Um, so, yeah, I'm confused. Yeah, I don't even know. Like, this sort of way might be fine, too. Uh... Yeah. Probably the silver drops this enormous blunder. So. Oh, okay. Ah, yeah, this is a faster attacking move. Um. <laughs> I seem to be out of fast responses. Uh, so I'm not sure about that way of executing it. Uh, but maybe this way of doing it. So, okay, at this point, Lily would take this. Um, interesting. This is complicated, man. So... I'm so confused. Do I have some trick to somehow win the rook, or exchange a lot of pieces, or I don't know. Just feels like this rook is loose again. Um, but I'm not seeing how I can like gain material and mate right away in response to just this capture, even though this capture looks slow to me. Um, I don't know, maybe I just take this. So, I guess I just keep taking stuff. Like, how confused am I? All right, that looks threatening. Um, oh, am I just, wait, no? Yeah, I'm sorry, that's mate, isn't it? Yeah, my mistake. All right, so I can't go that far. How far can I push? How far can I rock the boat here? Or have I already done too much? Perhaps I'm already lost. Um. Hmm. So 
so maybe I need to interject this thing first. I don't know. So I'm threatening the rook. I guess threatening a silver, threatening a knight. Trying to defend my castle. I don't know. Um, so I kept trying to find attack things that sent a drop around my king on the left side. But I don't see any drop that finishes me here. So. Uh, hang on. Really? I'm not sure about this one. That looks like another uh, sacrifice. Oh, I made it again, damn it. Wait, no, not that. Just put the piece right there. Yeah, so... Um, so this means I can't take the rook, so if I can't take the rook... Um, hmm. Okay. Yeah, this is more serious than I thought. No, uh, this... This defense leads to the same thing. Um, so I have to back up further. My bishop drop is not early enough. So yeah, this is actually a pretty serious threat. Um, so I have to, like, yeah. I have to pay attention to it. And not get mated instantly. Um, so. Alternatively, I could try a crazy bishop rook fork, but I'm not feeling it at the moment. Uh, oh. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, my attack against their king is so slow, and their attack against my king is very fast. So... I don't think I can hold this. It looks like I am checkmated. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not seeing any good, any fantastic ideas here. Um, yeah, it looks like I'm so hosed. Like, how do I even start a counterattack? I don't know. Um. Yeah, so I might need to do this. Well, I mean, you've got a lot of pieces attacking here. Uh, 
so like yeah this is pretty epic over here um so like these potentially are targets maybe that one's a target i don't know but yeah it seems you've got the cake and well in your sights here it's kind of hard to imagine uh, my attack ever getting faster than yours here so yeah Um, uh, so yeah, there's just not a lot of things to snipe at. There's this, this, and that, I guess. But, yeah. Yeah, at least I got the bishop out of the way so I could defend. But, yeah, this rook would ideally be much more active. Oh, I see. Actually, here, I might have this. This could be problematic. Uh, yeah. So this lance drop isn't so easy to... Yeah, attacking is hard. Uh, um... There's just too much. I, I don't understand, really. I guess, maybe? Uh, yeah, maybe this is slow, actually. And maybe this is why. Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, the opponent applies so much pressure. And just do the best you can against it. Um, thankfully, I guess my opponent expected that I would win, and that's how it turned out. But, yeah. It's hard to find all the right answers in Bioyomi. Um... Don't know. Like, I'm convinced that their attack long term is more solid than mine. But. I. Okay. I think, as, as they pointed out earlier, the silver on 8 8 was an important part of their castle. And now it's just not there. So this allows me to get some, but not very many tricks in, but some. But yeah, at this point, maybe this shape is slightly reasonable here. 
and they might have had to try something earlier. Um, so this Lance drop threatens to win the Rook. Wait, how do we even get here? Oh, so this is on the main variation. Yeah, so by the time that they've moved the Rook away from this 9-7 square, they've already moved it in one. They're already responding to my threats. Um, so they're running and running and running. And it seems like, you know, to make an attack, sometimes you have to give things up. So this rook, I mean, obviously blundering it for nothing is not good, but, um, yeah. I don't know, we might have to plug this into an engine to point out just, like, at what point something happened and something else should have happened. Because my strategy here of trying to advance my rook on this side of the board was something they shut down. And then they played their subway rook, and very good. Uh, they still, like, have four generals in defense, so it's not so easy for them to attack. But if they did manage to attack, it seems like I should be in a lot of trouble. Um, so, yeah, what can we do? Uh, maybe this is a clue that for future uh, teaching ladder games, maybe I should play things I'm more familiar with or something. I don't know. But then I never have a chance myself to learn. But it seems like when I play something I'm not familiar with, then both my opponent and I struggle a lot over the post-game analysis, because during the game I've posed them with actual challenges, which they didn't quite solve, and then during post-game it's also difficult to solve the things that I post to them. But uh, if I were able during the game to solve some of these problems, I would have picked some other move. Um, so I'm trying to put challenging things in front of them and see, like, help, help me figure this out. During the game, I was imagining, well, because the Rook is running, that must be part of their strategy. That, like, I know normally you would try to checkmate on the edge file very hastily. And that's the normal strategy, but at some point if you're running away with your Rook, maybe you've changed strategy a little bit. Maybe you've decided I'm going to bring the Rook to the 8th file instead of the ninth file. And, you know, maybe if you just bring the Rook over one file, bring it up some other way, you could have a different attack. But you don't have to always checkmate on the edge file. There are other ways to checkmate the King. Um, but yeah, maybe earlier in the game... Yeah. Oh, hey God, they're back. Uh. Uh. So, like, you've played this rook up, rook up, rook over. And then you'd have a knight in hand. And a knight could somehow be useful for breaking this position somehow. I'm not totally convinced of that, but during the game that's what I was thinking. Uh, ah, okay, so they were scared of my bishop. I guess. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I, 
I've done that before. Yeah, so. I mean, they might have a good point, too. People don't imagine things for no reason. Uh, but, yeah, this... Possibly this might have been a different way to go about things. Yeah. We're accustomed to... We're creatures of habit. If there's something we've done before, we'll do it again. Because that's what's comfortable to us. But that doesn't necessarily make it right. Um... Yeah. Yeah, when I played this over. So, I guess they'll have to find something. Okay. Yeah. Oh! So they actually were somewhat aware that this is not a crazy idea. Now, probably I should have moved the other gold there for the reasons of that bishop attacking the base gold. Yeah. Probably moving the front one was not exactly right, but... I don't know. Yeah. So I got the rook, and then I start running, um, and they correctly reinitialize their attack. Although, yeah, I guess they had the bishop in hand already. Like, theoretically, the bishop could have been dropped before they took the gold. Um, it would have saved them a move. Yeah, so then I... Watch this counterattack. Ah! <laughs> yeah, I was cautious. Yeah. Because my king is under a pretty heavy attack, so I did want to be careful not to give them too much. Um, oh yeah, and then this. Yeah, I don't know that there's a name for that. Yeah. It looks nice. It's probably quite effective. In the game, it works. Uh... But, yeah, that's... Maybe it was crushing. Hmm. Yeah, I wanted to do this. Um, I wonder, could I have gotten away with this? Hmm. 
so I'm not sure how much trouble they're actually in. I know I'd wish they were in trouble here, but I don't know that it's the case. Well, I'm sorry. No, they've given me a rook. Um, yeah. Yes, I think they're right. And then and this strikes. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is surprising to them. Um, yeah, somehow, because they don't have a rook, and since I've saved my king at this point, my attack, just, uh, my counterattack seems to defeat them. Um, so... Yeah, I don't know how they could continue an attack having dropped stuff here. Um, let's see. Castle's all broken, man, so, like, it's kind of hard to rebuild it. Yeah. Uh, earlier I was thinking about King 8-9. But I'm not fully sold on my idea, but it might be best. Yeah. Yeah. This way they still have four generals defending their king. Um, and I guess this eventually strikes and hits stuff. So, yeah, Shogi is a game of generals, and the king, I forget the proper name of the king, uh, but the king's quite an important general. Uh, so, yeah, here, um, yeah, after king 5-9... Let's see. Do I have a mate here? I don't recall. Yeah, I've got lots and lots of powerful pieces there. Um... Yeah, I think uh, possibly they could have somehow defended better 
like putting the silver next to the king does protect the squares immediately next to the king. So it does make it harder for me to drop more pieces immediately there. No, this is good. All oh, right, and the, I was thinking about this during the game. Uh, and I was trying to figure out if I had some crazy sacrifice. But this retreat looks sensible. Um, yeah. I'm not seeing a crazy sacrifice to break through. So, yeah, this retreat does look satisfactory. But maybe there's a checkmate here somewhere. I'm being greedy. Yeah, because, like, can I do something absolutely insane like this here, maybe? Um, I mean, I guess at this point you might have to defend this. Eh. So, and then what can I try? I don't know. Oh, but then here, this lance pins everything. Never mind. Uh, so... Yeah, this is messy. Well, yeah, so if we do that... Uh, that doesn't quite work out, but I think we have to take here. And there's just too many pieces tied down. There's... Defense actually doesn't hold. Uh, which is really unfortunate. Um... So, yeah. This castle just gets split in half. That's, yeah. That is super rough. Yep, yep, yep. So, yeah, possibly... Hmm. Does this mean, like, I don't know, during the game it felt like I was pushing the envelope a bit, playing a lot of really, uh, trying to sack the rook, trying to sack the bishop, trying to, like, really hard to checkmate. But maybe actually there is a mate at the end of the tunnel here. Yeah, that's so weird. Uh, so, okay, if the king runs, then which piece do we sacrifice this time? Um, hmm. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm trying to read out a mate. Yeah, I wonder, can I just do this here? Is this crazy? Set the idea of this next. Mm, this might be a bit too much. Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, the castle is collapsed, and somehow these pieces just overwhelm the king. That's pretty rough. It's quite the beatdown. Yeah. 
Oh, so this does prepare a way for the king to escape. Uh, crap. I was trying to checkmate. So... Yeah, I guess to... Gets harder and harder for me to continue making mating threats. Um... Yeah, so, like, I think if I'm mating here, it's by just taking more pieces. I'm not seeing some super clever thing. So, just, yeah. Something like that probably just works. Yeah. Maybe I got too clever with my attack. I don't know. So, um, yeah, at this point, they've run out of pieces to attack with. They can't even sack this lance against the pawn anymore. But yeah, uh, that's true. Um, yeah, so it was quite a sharp game. Um, a lot of these teaching ladder games are. Yeah, I might end up looking at a few positions after this, but I don't remember anything that I need to look at. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is a good game. Um, yeah, obviously, one, the, he'd studied more than I had, but uh, I've managed to find, well, no, it just had been a long time since I've looked at this. Uh, but yeah, taking a look from the beginning. He did play some active moves in the opening, and then later he pointed out that this pawn advance here uh, could be spent well later. Uh, he didn't have to play the pawn advance on the left side immediately, but due to our move ordering, it didn't so much matter when these things got played. Uh, I was surprised that my silver couldn't hit the bishop like I planned. Um... But, uh, yeah, then, when did, at what point did it become aware that this was going on? I think it was, it was around here I became aware that the subway work idea was happening. And, like my opponent points out, I should have seen that, like, when he brings his gold generals up, that indicates subway rook. Um... So I did apply pressure against this bishop, and it's a good thing I did. Because if I'd waited on this, perhaps they would have brought the silver up and the knight up, and this would have hit a lot harder than it did hit. Uh, that said, um, I probably shouldn't have survived this. Pawn 5 five is interesting. Uh, so I, for completely different reasons... Well, there's a couple things that look kind of weird about this pawn 5-5. Five five. Um, so it creates a hole behind the pawn, but it also blocks this bishop. And then maybe in many lines, they could find it useful to take some, or threaten to take a lot of pieces here. Which would restrict my options as to how I move my own pieces. Um... So, yeah, they prepare this subway rook. 
I decide against opposing Rook because there would be a waste of tempo because this Rook's moving away anyway. And I prepared this Bishop... When I played this, one thing I had in mind was blocking on the 9-7 square, which in post-game analysis, it doesn't seem like blocking a 9-7 makes difference. Um, yeah, during the game, I was astounded that they didn't just take this. Uh, yeah, I, this surprised me. Um, because this way, I mean, it costs both of us a move to get here. And I've weakened my position a bit. Yes, my silver is slightly closer to the king, but uh, I don't know. So maybe this pawn advance of mine seemed risky. I don't know. But now I've got a pawn in hand and dominance of the center. Uh, so I got cocky, I guess. Or I just struggle to read this out. Uh, but yeah, since I got a free pawn, I gave back the free pawn. I didn't need it. And we exchange a lot, and uh, they continue attacking. But I guess the key here is uh, if you're going to start exchanging and giving stuff back, uh, consider, like, if there's stuff you want placed on the board first, I guess. I don't know. Somehow this just seems artificially strong. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, I've played a lot of fun board games. Combat chess is pretty cool. Um... So, yeah, this either this pawn drop is the most amazing thing I've ever done, or this should not have worked so well. And maybe the only reason it works so well here is like what my opponent pointed out earlier. It's like, is this bishop retreat even worth it? Like, they're burning a lot of moves to get here. Um... So perhaps if this had just launched one move faster. Uh, well, first of all, I wouldn't have this response. Oh, right. During the game, I was fixated on, okay, I'm just going to activate my rook. La-di-da. So this is what I thought was going to happen. And... Yeah, I'm not so sure that my attack is that great here. So... Okay, say I activate my rook this way. What's my next move? Perhaps this is what should have happened. And... Yeah. This doesn't look... E oh wait, I'm sorry. No, typical here would be sack here first. Um... I think normally Lance takes. I don't know. I've got a lot to learn about this. But yeah, maybe something like this would have happened. Um, and I'm guessing that I am lost here because my rook is blocked by my bishop. So my rook can't defend across the rank in time. My bishop's not doing anything useful. Uh, I've got a handful of pieces here not doing anything useful, but they've got all their generals still sitting there in defense, too, so who knows? If they had one, two, three, four more Tempe to get this silver up here, instead of building this fun subway rook, then yeah, I would be dead. But in this position, I think I'm still in a lot of trouble. I just don't know how much, so... I guess that's the general feeling that this game gives me. Uh, yeah, my opponent got overwhelmed just by the rating situation. Um, I don't know. Also, the time pressure does weigh on everyone. But 
You know, you have to... Yeah. What can I say about time pressure? Uh, I've gotten lucky in time pressure, sure. But doesn't necessarily mean that I'm good at that. Just means that, you know, eventually it's a part of the game that you have to get used to, I guess. And play moves that have some effect. Um, because eventually, I don't know. One of the things I had to get beyond in this game was judging all of my moves. And instead having to, like, express, okay, this is how I'm thinking about the position, this is my idea, and saying, I don't know if this is good or not, but it's an idea and let's go with it. And that seems to be the way that I'm playing these days. Is I find some ideas, I play them, are they the best? I Probably not. But, um, you know, it's better to have a plan than no plan. So, it sucks when your plan gets derailed and you need to find another plan. Uh, but you always have to play with a plan, I think. And it's hard to do, but yeah, I think this could have been powerful. Uh, like, here, I had a plan. My plan was to take this knight. Um, I never got there. Uh, but, yeah, having a plan somehow derailed my opponent. And instead of us getting in a position like this, where it seems like I'm dead, um, uh, they spent a move retreating, trying to stop my plan. They're a bit afraid of what I'm doing. And since we're both so afraid of each other, weird things happen this game. Uh, so yeah, I opened my bishop up to try to stop this because I'm afraid of it. And they're so... I don't know. This might have been another critical moment where if they just taken time out to do this, maybe they were afraid of the silver or something. I don't know. But yeah, a lot of things rapidly changed here in the game variation. And suddenly... I mean, I'm still playing this, which probably does not make any sense. Maybe there's some way for me to bail the hell out of here before it's too late. I don't think so. But supposing that this checkmates me... Um... Is there a way for my king to escape here? It's like, if I played something crazy like this, is this somehow good enough? I don't know. And the idea is if knight takes, um, then if I do silver takes, if they push, I could run. And maybe only die once here? I don't know. Um, maybe this is some crazy thing. Probably not, though. Probably they don't do knight takes. But, yeah, it's such a mess. Anyway, we both got very confused. I stuck with a the plan, they stuck with a the plan. Um, though, no, I had to derail my plan. I spent, like, most of my Byoyomi, many of these moves, reacting, trying to evaluate how serious their threat was, and the more I looked at it, the more serious it looked. Um, this would be crushing if they had one more piece attacking. They don't, but if they had just one more then this sacrifice would be just so overwhelming. Yeah. So they had many good ideas, but in time pressure we both got very excited and weird, weird, weird things happened. I guess they were concerned about this. So maybe my initial reaction of taking with the silver was somehow spot on, given that their generals are still back home. 
me bringing the silver up and this gold over might be the right way to handle it in this very specific instance. I don't know. Hopefully, we've all gained something from this experience. Uh, yeah, hope we've all enjoyed that. Interesting game.